Goodbye, 3 p.m. We still have 45 minutes left. What are you doing? I'm reorganizing my bookshelf. But don't you have that big project due tonight? You're right. I'll do it later. Today we are exiting our procrastination area. I'm back, your favorite teacher, one who doesn't teach you specific subjects, but just teaches about life. Today we are covering everything procrastination. We'll be discussing why we procrastinate, why it is bad for us, how to overcome it. And I will also be sharing with you guys my own personal plan on how I want to permanently end my procrastination era. Take your seats because today's class is just getting started. I procrastinate more than I'd like to admit and just to note a few of the things that I put off. For as long as I've known, any time that I have been faced with the subjects of science or history, I was always kind of like a step behind when it came to studying for exams or doing homework. And it's just because those are my least liked subjects. I always found them to be quite boring. Put off paying parking tickets, taking out my trash in my room, cleaning my closet. So whenever we put off something, knowing that we are to face negative consequences in the long run, we are procrastinating. We do this because we like that short-term relief. We like to be stress-free in the meantime. Let me just say, this is quite unhealthy. It is actually straight up harmful to ourselves. Those who procrastinate tend to experience higher levels of stress and are more prone to illnesses. And when we experience this stress, we become more susceptible to anxiety, depression, sleep problems, headaches. The list kind of goes on. Overall, us procrastinators end up suffering more and performing worse. Especially us students, we can see those direct effects happening and our grade. Interesting story. I was that child that was going to the doctors a lot more than my other siblings were. I was very prone to sicknesses. I kind of just thought I was unlucky when it came to that. It wasn't until I did this very research for this topic that I realized that maybe it was because I've gone my whole life kind of procrastinating things and faced a lot of pressure in that. And let me tell you, I do not work well under pressure. I get really anxious. My leg bounces uncontrollably. Just last month, I had a few projects due. I had some videos and I needed to get them done by a certain time. I ended up getting sick with a sore throat. I was bedridden for like two days because I just needed that mental break. And since then, things have kind of been eye-opening to me that I needed to change the way that I was living. I have the power to start taking control of how procrastination determines my life. I can start taking the right steps to overcome my procrastination, especially being someone who wants to live a full and healthy life, who wants to be successful. I truly think without the absence of procrastination, I might not get to experience these things. And if you were in this with me, just know that we are fully capable of making this happen. You are in control of what happens to your life. Now, there are many different reasons why you procrastinate from our personality facets, the task characteristics, environmental factors. Some of us even have ADHD, where it's a part of our executive functioning. But I want to discuss some of the more common reasons why we do this and provide you guys with some tips on how to overcome each one of these. First, some general tips for whenever you're feeling unmotivated or in an endless cycle of procrastination. Whenever you are procrastinating, your body and mind are literally working together against you. Because you're in a state of comfort, your dopamine levels will keep you in that state for as long as possible. So you quickly have to find a way to put yourself in a state of discomfort. You want to do something that is already physically and emotionally harder than the task that you are avoiding? Hopping in a cold shower. Who wants to do that? Now that you've done the more difficult tasks, anything else after will seem like a piece of cake. Obviously, hopping in the shower may not be realistic. Ooh. So getting up and doing like 20 push-ups, 30 jumping jacks. This is why people will say, get your most difficult task done first. Because everything after that will seem really easy. So the next time you find yourself scrolling on social media for hours, the next thing you might want to do is start doing some burpees on the floor. Now another general tip when it comes to procrastination is to break it up into manageable pieces. You have a final paper coming up weeks before. You can dedicate 30 minutes of the week to work on it with a study partner. Starting the project and doing it for like five minutes is easier than starting it later and having to complete it within like five hours. You want to start to instill that mindset that it is better to get ahead of the project even if you are working at it for a short amount of time because it's the better alternative to doing it all in one sitting when you know it's going to stress you out. Now, if you're someone who finds a task to be easier when in the presence of someone else, you're going to have to use that knowing to your advantage. I'd like to argue that I'm quite the independent person, but when it comes to more difficult adulting tasks, for some reason, I need my boyfriend to go with me. And eventually, yes, I know I will grow out of it. I go to doctor's appointments by myself now. But if you know you need that extra push, it might be wise to invite someone to tag along whenever you're doing that task you're avoiding. And if you're a student who likes to work with other people, this tip 
is going to work magic against your procrastination. Something I've done throughout the semesters is always reaching out to at least one person in my classes. If I know we'll have a project coming up or a final essay. I will always ask, do you want to work on this assignment together at this place at this time? I will always ask to work in person because I'm just someone who is held more accountable. When I am like working face to face with someone, this is that we are more likely to let ourselves down than to let someone else down. So if you have a set day where you're supposed to study with someone, you're less likely to flake knowing that someone else is relying on you. Essentially, this is all a win-win situation because now you have a study buddy helping each other out, which always makes a task much easier. And third, you guys are each other's motivation. You are supporting each other's productivity by getting things done ahead of time versus procrastinating it. I've used this tactic before and it has been the sole reason why I've gotten A grades in classes. Sometimes we procrastinate because the task is simply unappealing. We find it quite boring, which kind of pushes us away from wanting to start the project. This is me with my AP World History class. Anytime I had to take notes and read the textbook, it just pinned me to do so. My simple advice to you on how to overcome this is just find a way to make this enjoyable. Anytime a class required heavy note taking, I would do my best to make this as fun as possible. So I would use highlighters, I would use colored pens, and I would take my notebook and write the notes out and make them look cute and Organized. I would sometimes read the text out loud to myself and just made it sound more interesting And then if I wanted to switch it up Maybe I would take my notes on my iPad or type them out So switching things up for me has always kept things a little bit more interesting I also think changing your environment really helped. I love going to cafes and doing a little bit of studying reading It also forces you to limit your distractions Which we'll talk about in a bit and I found for myself that this always works I'll spend a good amount of hours studying and I always feel proud of myself after now We also might procrastinate because we have low self-confidence when it comes to completing the task or it overwhelms us or we are perfectionists and we can't accept that things might go wrong We would just rather avoid the task altogether avoid the stress. I am guilty of this If you are someone who struggles with the low self-confidence look practice makes perfect with more practice You'll feel more prepared and just with ease going into tackling that certain something I used to say to myself that I was not a good writer and now I'd like to argue that I'm pretty decent because in most of my classes I was having to write like three to four for discussion boards a week. I was getting lots of writing practice in. It all kind of came to me when I was writing this one essay and things were just Excuse me. flowing and I was actually enjoying the process of me writing. Now I feel a little bit more at ease and have the confidence I need to go in when writing a final paper. I feel like this goes without saying, but anything you want to start in life isn't just gonna come easy, but definitely taking it one at a time, whether it's practicing that thing for one minute a day, and soon enough you'll feel a lot better about doing that certain thing. Now if you're the type to feel overwhelmed by tasks, I have the perfect formula for you and this is something that I have done and has worked successfully and has also proven to help those who have ADHD. The formula goes, the task plus the reward equals increased motivation. We are much more inclined to do with something if a reward immediately follows. And one of the ways to go about rewarding yourself can be kind of like the BF Skinner, getting a little technical here, sorry. A theory that states that when our action is followed by a reward, we are more increased to do that certain behavior. When a behavior follows with a punishment, the frequency of that behavior is decreased. So one of my own strategies that I wanna follow this year is is that when I need to study for a specific exam, I will not allow myself to make plans or hang out with anyone that entire day until the studying is completed. Only then will I be able to enjoy the weekend or go out with my friends. That is the reward that follows me completing that certain task. And the punishment is the absence of that reward. This method is meant to reinforce studying because a reward follows it and the frequency of you procrastinating and putting it off begins to decrease. What I personally like to do when it comes like doctor's appointments is I will schedule an entire day that follows it. For example, I had to get some blood drawn, my first pap smear and everything. And I was pretty terrified to do this. I took my sister with me and I told her, hey, let's have a cutesy little day after. I really want to go to this cafe. And soon enough, I started to look forward to going to the doctor's office because there was this lovely fun day following it. So a lot of times we have this negative idea of that certain thing in our head and that's what makes us so afraid to do it or so overwhelmed by doing it. If you kind of 
pair it with something that's a little bit more enticing, now you have a much more brighter idea of what that certain task is. If you're a perfectionist, well, that's a different story. If you're a perfectionist, most of the time you are afraid of failing, things not going exactly to your way. That's a hard thing to let go of because we want that control. Also because we are setting expectations a little too high. We need to kind of lower them, bring them back to reality. So whatever that certain thing is that you are afraid of starting, take it one thing at a time and know that failure is a part of the process. I would not be here sitting in front of a camera if I needed my channel to be the most perfect. I would be far behind because ultimately what has gotten me here is trial and error. So start with maybe like a simple task where you're like, I'm just gonna f now amongst all the reasons why we procrastinate, I think that this is going to be the one we all struggle with, which is our distractions. With social media, it is incredibly easy for us to lose ourselves and our phones scrolling for hours and hours. On top of that in itself, we also have distractions like social events, relationships, books you want to read. But there are ways to overcome this. First one being cold turkey. Basically, you eliminate all distractions, but kind of to an extreme. I found this to be quite helpful when I deleted TikTok. I went without TikTok talk for almost a year. I had so much more time to focus on other things because I didn't have that distraction. I nor had that temptation because it wasn't available to me. Specifically when it comes to our phone, the best way to do it is out of sight, out of mind. Leave it in your car when you go to the coffee shop. Give it to your friend and tell them, hey, can you put a passcode on this and not tell me until the end of the day. Now, if your distractions aren't your phone, but it's your relationship, hanging out with friends, one of the things you can do is set boundaries with your friends and tell them on this specific day, I'm going to be working for XYZ throughout the day and I need no distractions. I'll be able to answer my phone or hey I can't hang out on these specific days because I dedicate these to working on my homework. Again, if I'm not tempted with the idea, I'll be less likely to get distracted. Now, procrastination can also be a result of our fears and anxieties. Valid. Our anxious feelings can come about from the overwhelmingness of a certain task. Our fears and anxieties can also be a result of the traumas that we faced when growing up. A lot of the times it's things that we just learned as life went on. This is my own personal advice and how I've gone about completing certain tasks that made me feel anxious. One thing I didn't do before was forgive myself and have a sort of understanding that there was a reason that I would feel anxious when I would do a certain something. 2023 was probably the most stressful year I've ever experienced and a part of that was thanks to the tax season that year. I had so many mental breakdowns going through this. One of the times was me crying to my parents. As I cried like I've never had before, just release of stress that was built up. I couldn't do it all on my own. I wasn't good at organizing these things. I had other things going on in my life. So after that conversation with them, they helped me find an accountant. I set up a meeting with a tax advisor. 2023 taxes are going much more swiftly. And what is helping me have a better relationship with the idea of money. First of all, talking about it to someone. And two, finally getting some help. Whether this is you talking through your fears to maybe a therapist. Or if you're like me and struggles to handle a task all on your own. You can always ask someone to be there to help you. Help is only offered if you ask. Something that I had realized within all of this was that I actually had a poor relationship with money. After I did some inward reflecting, I realized I grew up middle class and the Michaela now knows that that was very much well off. I wouldn't say that when I was younger I thought we were poor by any means. I just saw that at times money was a stressor on my parents and just the choices they made to be more frugal with their money. Yeah, in and out was like our treat because a more expensive alternative to McDonald's. I love the way I grew up and so I'm very thankful thankful for that. But I do think seeing the stress that it put on my parents sometimes is what has contributed to my idea of money. Needless to say, I am heading towards a much more healthier relationship with money. That was quite a lot to get out of me because I've never really talked about that to be honest. I felt that it was right to share because if any of you guys could relate to that, then I hope we shared that bond moment right there. A lot of times that task is so daunting in our head and it really scares us to the point where we stress out about it. So we have to find a way to diminish that idea to something that is doable, that we are capable of doing. I found that telling myself that I can manage my money and I am good at taxes, I am becoming more organized and saving my money properly. Just telling myself positive affirmations. Replace any negative thoughts you have in your head about that task. I hope that gets you to a place where you feel comfortable enough to just start. And it can be the most irritating thing when someone tells you to just start because yeah. I would if I could. I think with the right approaches, you can definitely get there. I'm now gonna share my own personal plan with you guys and how I will attempt to permanently exit my procrastination era this year.
This is my plan on how I want to incorporate better habits so that I can overcome procrastination. Feel free to steal any of these tips if you feel like we share the same struggles. In the description box, I will also be leaving a Google Doc that will break down my plan more in depth. First things first, I am going to be shamelessly plugging my planner. Wouldn't be me if, it, if I didn't do this. It is the last week that you guys can pre-order my life diary. I'm gonna talk about this because this has been one of the things that has helped me be a lot more productive and organized these past two months. I am a to-do list girl. Without making one, I will not have an idea of what needs to get done. There's a few pages that you get for every month where you can write out basically everything you have to do in a day. School has been so demanding and there have been a lot of assignments I've been getting. I've been making sure to put all of my assignments into these pages just so I don't ever forget about an assignment due. On top of that, I can write out all the things outside of school that need to be done like with YouTube or just like grocery shopping. Like you can note those things down. I can tell you that my productivity increases whenever I'm just writing out whatever I have to do throughout the week. My pages are like proof in the pudding. You'll see me check off a lot of things. Speaking of to-do lists, one of the things a part of my plan was that if I know that a final paper is coming up or if I know I have to study for an exam, what I'm gonna do when it comes to writing that out in my planner is setting one day aside, one day maybe of the month, two days of the month, even better, to just do that thing. Nothing else on my to-do list. That is the only thing that needs to get done. The reason I say this is because whenever I would write out begin final paper and it would be a part of a five item to-do list, you know it was always gonna be at the last of my priorities. It would be push to the next day, into the next day, into the next day, and it would eventually be something that I procrastinated. And it's because you see this to-do list and you're like, okay, well, I'd rather go do that, or let, maybe I'll do this and I'll feel satisfied. You'll get the satisfying feeling of getting all the other things done, even if you're not doing the main thing that you really should be getting done. I like to feel as if something was accomplished, and so by having a to-do list of just that one thing, you'll feel unsatisfied if it's not completed. Like, knowing that's the only thing you have to do, I like to feel that satisfying feeling at the end of the day and like crossing off that one thing off my to-do list would just bring a lot of relief and so that's going to be one of my plans going into tackling those assignments i know i avoid at all costs the other thing that is a part of my mantra this year is to substitute discipline for motivation i want to not just rely on being motivated all the time but having the discipline so that when motivation isn't there the discipline is like oh well you have to do your it. brain just works that way like it's already a habit i can definitely admit to myself that I've never been a very disciplined person. That doesn't mean that that can't change. This year will be the year of discipline for me. How I plan to do that is by incorporating smaller habits one by one. Once one habit has become a part of my routine, I will then incorporate a new habit. And the emphasis is on that these are small habits. A lot of times we fail to incorporate a habit into our life because it just isn't realistic. So start with a small time frame, like 30 seconds or one minute. Since you're starting off that low expectation on yourself, there isn't much pressure on it, which makes us more likely to do it. One of the smaller habits right now that I'm working on is just making my bed every day. I want to say I've passed that 30 day mark where I've made my bed every single day. So I think once this habit is instilled, my next one is going to be meditating for 30 seconds. I've been slowly incorporating this here and there and it just feels so relieving. Essentially what all these small habits will help you do is instill healthier habits into your life. Healthier habits that are working towards a bigger goal, which is is what discipline means. Discipline is also reinforced through punishment. We did touch on this a little bit earlier, but some of the ways that I want to make myself a more obedient person, I know that sounds kind of like extreme. I really have to start training my mind to not following two temptations by just using reinforcers, not going out with friends until all my homework is done, not going on my phone until I've had 10 minutes of cleaning. It is kind of the process of creating a habit, but in my case, as someone who lacks the discipline, it helps to use those reinforcers to correct my poor behaviors. So I kind of have to rewire my brain to work a certain way and just change my lifestyle a little bit more so that I'm following certain rules. It is going to be hard and there will be days that I feel like I want to fall into certain habits. I can't be hard on myself about that because I am human. I think so long as I remind myself of this bigger goal that I have, not to touch on how I want to work on becoming a more disciplined student because I feel like this is a whole different category I have to tackle. The side of my Canvas to-do list being like this long made my heart so I made a little strategy for myself on how I plan to not fall behind, not procrastinate. So the first part of my plan is to have a goal set that I want to achieve by the end of the semester. This will be my driving motivation to discipline myself and to just work a little bit harder. And that goal for me is to get a minimum of a 3.5 GPA. And I know this is doable. I have accomplished it before. It's the first time I got the Dean's List. The second thing that I want to do is get a majority of all of my work done before the weekend. Wednesday, Thursday, I will take at least two to three 
three hours to get at least three to five assignments done. And I'm not gonna put that immense pressure on myself to get all of my assignments done because I know that if that is set on me, I will just dread every Wednesday, Thursday. It will also just stress me out. On Wednesdays, it is kind of perfect because I have a three hour gap in between two of my classes. In between that gap, I will stay on campus. I'll go to the library, get as much work done, kind of just do all I need to do while I'm already there. I actually ended up doing that this week. And when I tell you that, I felt so proud of myself. After getting a good chunk of my work done on Wednesday, I had to watch some like lectures and take notes, answer some discussion posts. We did it. Finished our discussion one, got through two lectures. I have two more lectures to go and then an assignment and another discussion. I'm gonna try to get through the rest of my assignments for this class done tonight, just because a chunk of like what I have to do usually comes from this class. That way tomorrow I can just finish off whatever I have to do for other classes. I think that's gonna be my structure from now on where Wednesdays will be the more difficult assignments. Thursdays will be kind of like the lenient, easy ones to get through. After doing that, there was only like one, two, three assignments left. And I didn't feel like when I had to do those, I was dreading it versus when I would let myself get like five assignments done on a Saturday, knowing that Sunday was coming along and then the rest of the school week was coming along. That would just, it would leave me in shambles every time. Definitely using this approach, I think it will also allow me to use the weekends to just have fun and have that balance that I need when it comes to school. Holding myself to it, I will do this every week until the semester ends. I will. Now the last thing, part of my plan, it's about working on what's happening inside here. Whenever I feel overwhelmed and stressed, which then sometimes drives me away from getting things done. I'll like curl up in a ball and watch some YouTube and make myself feel better. Basically, I'm a girl who just like over worries, if that's a word. I think too much about my future and how if I'm not doing a list of to-do lists, I am not gonna be successful or- I won't be able to provide for my family, like- There's this pressure that I put on myself that leads me to stress more and we talked about stress. We know how it affects us. And so I need to start being more zen. I just need to take that idea out of my mind that everything that I do now is what determines my future because it isn't. I could be doing this now and then I decide, hey, I wanna be someone who just reads. I need to just start living in the now. I need to start living for whatever it is I wanna do right now. It's literally just those pressuring thoughts that I put on myself, which make me enjoy whatever I'm doing less. I just need to start having a more healthy approach to when I do things with more confidence in myself and more looseness. Almost just do it, like Nike says, but actually just live your life and not feel like just because you make one wrong move, things will go tumbling down. You'll realize that's not the case. And I have. And if you're like me, we can hold each other accountable in this. We can DM each other and just be each other's like hype man. Because sometimes all you need to hear is someone tell you that you can do it. That is the end of today's video. This was probably my most favorite 101 class. And I hope that you students enjoyed. For one, this is one thing that I struggle with. I kind of wanted to use this as a way to improve myself, but also help you guys do the same. I will see you guys in the next 101 class. Feel free to subscribe. There's a lot of different content on my channel from books to studying. Have a lovely day, guys. Hugs and kisses. What are you doing? Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs>